In this lesson, we're going to learn about the difference between temperature and heat, kinetic and potential energy, and relate those concepts to heating curves and cooling curves. Before proceeding, please make sure that you have visited the Harcourt School website as indicated at the top of your note sheet. First, we're going to talk about the difference between temperature and heat. Temperature is defined as a measure of the average kinetic energy of particles. If you are wondering what kinetic energy is, uh, it is the energy of motion. Kinetic energy can be abbreviated E sub K. Kinetic energy is going to depend on the speed of the particles. So the higher the temperature, the faster the particles are moving. There is an actual equation for kinetic energy. I've indicated it here. M is for mass and V is for velocity, which is roughly speed. Uh, we won't be working with this equation. I just put it here for informational purposes only. Any time that you have a temperature change, this means that you're going to have a change in kinetic energy. This is going to be very important coming up. Uh, a change in kinetic energy can be abbreviated delta E sub K. Since we just talked about kinetic energy, let's talk about potential energy. Potential energy, or E sub P, is stored energy, and in solids, liquids, and gases, uh, energy is, a sto is stored due to the arrangement of the particles. So with gases, uh, the particles are the farthest apart, and they have the weakest forces of attraction between them. With solids, the particles are the closest together and have the strongest forces of attraction between them. And so with gases, the potential energy is the highest because the particles are the farthest apart. With solids, potential energy would be the lowest because the particles are the closest together. As you go through phase changes, potential energy is going to change. As you go, say, from a gas to a liquid, there would be a decrease. Particles are going to become closer together, and they're going to become more tightly bound. So anytime there is a change in potential energy, there won't be a change in kinetic energy uh, or temperature. Heat is different than temperature. Heat is a form of energy. It does flow or it is transferred between two substances that have different temperatures. The amount of heat that is transferred would depend on the difference in temperature between the two substances and then also how much of each substance you have. So uh, heat will also depend on the mass due to the quantity of the particles. Of course, heat can only be transferred when the substances come in contact with one another, so there would be some collisions. And heat is only transferred in one direction. It flows from hot to cold, or from higher temperatures to lower temperatures. Again, remember, temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the particles, and this is very different than our definition for heat. Next, we're going to talk about heating curves and cooling curves, and we'll be bringing in kinetic and potential energy and heat versus temperature. When you visited the Harcourt School website link, as indicated at the top of your note sheet, you are able to observe uh, three substances. And the three substances were placed on a hot plate, and then there was a heat transfer between the hot plate and the substance. Now, sometimes this caused a change in temperature, which you saw on the graph here and here, for example. This was the purple substance. And then sometimes um, you observe no temperature change, like here and here. So we're going to talk about what this all means. The graphs created on the Harcourt website were partial heating curves. This is a full heating curve. This is a heating curve for water specifically. And you can see in segment one, you start with uh, a solid and it warms up, it has an increase in temperature or kinetic energy uh, until segment two hits and that's where um, the ice would start to melt. And of course that means going from a solid to a liquid. And there is no temperature change or no change in kinetic energy during that time. That 
would be a change in potential energy because the arrangement of the particles is changing as it's going from a solid to a liquid. Then for segment three, that's where the liquid is warming. It's experiencing a change in temperature. The speed of the particles is changing. And then we hit segment four where uh, boiling is occurring. And again, there's no change in uh, temperature there because we are changing phases. We're going to uh, experience a change in the arrangement of our particles going from a liquid to a gas. And then if you were able to collect that gas for segment five and continue heating it, um, you would see an increase in temperature or kinetic energy for that gas. The temperatures where the phase changes occur are uh, zero degrees Celsius right here uh, for the melting and 100 degrees Celsius right here for the boiling. And you probably uh, recognize those as the melting point and the boiling point for water, zero degrees Celsius and 100 degrees Celsius. Here we have the definitions of melting point and boiling point. They simply are temperatures where the phase changes occur. For water, zero degrees Celsius is the melting point. But this is for water only. Different substances would have different melting points. And the same would be true for boiling points. The boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius is unique to water, and other substances would have different boiling points. Melting point and boiling point are actually one way that you can identify substances because they are unique. Here are some trends for heating curves in general. Whether it is potential energy or kinetic energy, the type of energy would increase over time. Now it can only be one or the other, uh, meaning for like parts 1, 3, and 5 where there is a temperature change, there is a change in kinetic energy only not potential because we're not changing the phase of the substance uh, or we're not changing the arrangement of the particles. So during temperature increases, you would see an increase in kinetic energy. For parts two and four, the phase changes, there is no change in kinetic energy because there is no change in temperature. And again, that's where you would see a change in potential energy and it would be an increase because you're going from at part two, a solid to a liquid, and then at part four, a liquid to a gas. Remember, gases have the highest potential energy because the particles are the farthest apart. And heating curves in general are endothermic. And that means that uh, energy is going to be absorbed by the substance. You have a, a transfer of energy coming from the surroundings into the system, whatever it is you happen to be looking at. If you remember the Harcourt website, uh, the heat came from the hot plate, which would have been in the surroundings, going into the system uh, that is the beaker. Cooling curves are the opposite of heating curves, but you see five segments here again. Uh, the first segment right here, uh, you have uh, a gas being cooled, so you would see uh, a decrease in temperature, a decrease in kinetic energy. Here we have uh, the gas turning into a liquid. That's a phase change of condensation, and there is no change in temperature. Next we have the cooling of a liquid, a decrease in temperature. Then the freezing of the liquid occurs next. The liquid turns into a solid. Again, no change in temperature uh, because there's a change in potential energy instead of kinetic. And then finally, the solid cools. So we see changes in kinetic energy here and here and here and changes in potential here and here. The melting point and boiling point are labeled here, but uh, when it's a cooling curve, you can also call the melting point the freezing point. So just to summarize what happens with cooling curves in general, whether there is a change in potential energy or kinetic energy, it would be a decrease in energy. During the temperature uh, decreases, that's a decrease in kinetic energy. 
No change in potential because you're not changing phases. You're not changing the arrangement of the particles. And then during the phase changes, where there is no change in temperature, there would be no change in kinetic, but a change in potential. And in fact, it would be a decrease because we're going from a gas to a liquid and a liquid to a solid. Cooling curves are exothermic. And this means that heat is going to be released uh, by the substance out into the surroundings. So it is a system to surroundings energy transfer.